Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. On this week's show we are fresh off the back of British Champs. We have our first swimmer who was selected for the British team this summer and we can't wait to talk more to Ollie Morgan. Yeah, there were many standout summers, like we said, when we reviewed this year's British Champs. And this week's guest is one of those standout summers. He had an exceptional week of backstroke swimming from the 50 right the way up to the 200. And he left us absolutely no choice but to get him on. 100%. So let's have a listen to what's in store on this week's podcast. Yeah, I think the main thing is there's still so much that I can kind of progress with, Mm. whether it be uh, training hours or meters or you know, anything to do with training, we've got so much to play around with. Um, and we're still definitely learning about how I train best and what works for me because, well, yeah, realistically, I've had one full season and this is, well, this is my second actual season of swimming. Yeah, I think me and Gary have spoken about it. Um, it's just about kind of swimming your own race, uh, let not letting the occasion get to you and going out there and again, just enjoying it. So please welcome on to the podcast this week, Uni of Birmingham swimmer and the new British champion in the 50, the 100 and the 200 metres backstroke, Ollie Morgan. Ollie, thank you for joining us on the podcast this week. How are things with you? Yeah, really good. Uh, came off the back of champs and had a bit of time to kind of regroup and kind of evaluate what we what we did at champs. And so, yeah, back in training this week and yeah, it's feeling good. Yeah, a bit of a surreal experience coming away with three golds, I bet. Um, bit of a, I don't know, a, sh- a shock to the system after champs? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I definitely knew there was going to be some good swims, but to then be, yeah, the triple backstroke champion, I was just like, yeah. It was just, <laughs> we, well, we took it We took it each day as it came. And yeah, I'm not really too sure how it's happened, but the, the work's paying off. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. Now, before we get into your performances at Champs and kind of reviewing the week with you as it went, I think it's worth kind of going into a little bit of a background in swimming or your background in swimming, because to many people, you will be a new name in Team GB this summer. So where did swimming start for you? What clubs have you been through before you got to Uni of Birmingham? Yeah, so... You know, you start off as a kid as, yeah, just swimming lessons. So it was just at my local swimming, um, like, leisure centre, uh, which we only have a 20-metre a pool. Um, so it's a really, really old kind of back-in-the-day pool. Um, so I went through all of that, and my sister was swimming at Ludlow Swimming Club. And I was kind of I was kind of interested in football, and my dad was into mountain biking, so I was into that as well. And swimming was kind of wasn't really uh, one of my main focuses and then you know you end up at competitions for the weekend and I kind of fell in love with it and thought I want to get involved with that and that's kind of how I started so yeah I've been at was at Ludlow from probably the age of 10 or 11 and I was there up until I moved to uni. Now apparently you've only been training seriously for 18 months is first of all is that true? So yeah realistically first year of uni was the first time I had an actual program um back at my old swimming club we well I trained probably three maybe four times a week uh all evening sessions no mornings um I was probably only doing 3k a -hmm. session so really really low meters but then it was kind of backed up with the other sports I was doing so like yeah I was out on my mountain bike a lot so I obviously had that base work in there Mm. it just wasn't yeah in the pool was the pool work more sprint based stuff then in terms of if, you, if you're going mountain biking that's more aerobic sort of side of it so the yeah. pool stuff would then be more sprint based would i be right in saying that yeah i would say so we didn't really do too many like heavy blocks of kind of okay. yeah base work and things in the pool mm. it's really interesting you're not the first like elite guest to come on this podcast and say like as a junior you didn't actually do that many hours i think cara hanlon she was at a tiny tiny pool up in the shetlands tiny, tiny, and yeah. essentially it like it's it's not that it kept her in the sport but she still feels like she's just starting her journey whereas a lot of kids who go off to your, your swimming schools they'll do your 16 20 hours a week and more whereas do you feel like now you're at Uni of Ber- University of Birmingham, you don't have a massive amount of miles in your, your shoulders. You're you're refreshed. There's so much future ahead of you. 
Yeah, I think the main thing is there's still so much that I can kind of progress with, mm. whether it be yeah, training hours or meters or you know anything to do with training. We've got so much to play around with, um, and we're still definitely learning about how I train best and what works for me. Because, well, yeah, realistically, I've had one full season, and this is well, this is my second actual season of swimming. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a learning curve. Um, when I first when I first joined uni, you know, I came Gary Gary had seen me race back at the festival of swimming, mm. and he I raced the hundred and the two hundred, and he was pretty pretty chuffed with the times that I went, considering mm. we'd just come off pre post COVID, and mm. he was like, I've never seen someone swim just like that, just like a catch on the water and things like that. Mm. Um, he was like, Yeah, you've just literally built this two hundred and mm. dropped everyone else out of absolutely nowhere <laughs> and uh he was like yeah you've got to come you've got to come realistically um <laughs> and my sister my sister was at birmingham as well so that's kind of how i'd been in contact with him okay. okay and yeah he just he wanted to get me in and he's been really good with how kind of yeah last year i obviously really struggled with the huge demand on training mm. going from yeah nothing to then having this huge huge kind of um sessions and things and we he'd invited us a few of us freshers last year to go into pre-season to train with the current squad and i think the first day of pre-season i'd already done more than what i'd usually do in like a week and a half <laughs> oh, wow so it's like yeah, it's been it's been definitely a learning curve, and you know he's been really good with adapting my training to how I'm how how I'm feeling and how I'm training. So yeah, how how did you help, or how did he help with that transition then from quite a small meterage program to what is I presume now how many hours a week are you doing now? Um, I'm not sure on the exact amount. It's probably, I do about eight sessions here okay. or there. Um, mm. How, yeah, they're between an hour and a half, two hours. How did he help with that transition? Was it an easy term, kind of building up to it? Was it throw you in the deep end? Um, well, I was kind of, I guess I was kind of thrown in the deep end. You know, I wanted to be there as much as I could. Mm. Um, you know, I'm one of these people that I always want to train as hard as I can all the time. And him trying to rein me back and say, no, come on, we need to be sensible. It was almost frustrating, yeah. But... <laughs> um you know he he jotted down like he'd kept a track of when i was ill and things and it was getting like every three or four weeks okay. um which was mm. just having a big impact just like colds or little niggles and because last year i wasn't on a scholarship program at the uni i didn't get that kind of um support with obviously my snc and we had an mm. snc program but it wasn't individualized and based on people's background it was kind of what you wanted they just wanted moving forward mm. um so he was been really good with yeah bringing me right reining me in and kind of looking at what we need to do to kind of move forward in the smoothest way it's kind of reminiscent of alex cahoon because he yeah, went from siren sester i don't know four hours a week max i would say roughly <laughs> And then he went all the way to Loughborough and now is at 16 hours a week, which is obviously, you know, he basically more than doubled what he was doing beforehand. So how long would you say it, it took you from that jump? How long did it take you to fully get used to that intensity and that volume? I think it was probably a few months. I think it was probably the first semester of uni. Um, mm. And then kind of after the Christmas period, my short course swimming was nowhere near as good as my long course swimming and we kind of we kind of knew that and so when we got into that long course season it was proper we knuckled down we planned out what we wanted to do and things we wanted to improve on and we put the work in and in it, and it paid off um i think i had a pretty good season last season for yeah my mm. first actual long course season um mm. and again it was just turning up to a meet hitting the swims refreshing the mind straight after each swim and then focusing on the next and not kind of looking back at what had happened until at least the end of the meet mm. Interesting. now the, the swims at champs they are obviously incredible at what point did you know that this season was kind of on that sort of trajectory because me and dan kind of sit down every year and 
kind of quietly look at long course bucks and look at the swims that come out of there because there are usually one or two really fast ones that then make the team this summer. So last summer was what Medi Harris in the hundred back. She an incredible swim there. Then this summer, well, Kiana McInnes is another example. Is that a point where you and Gary can sit down and look at that meet and go, you know what, something's happening at Champs? I think the main thing this season was kind of because I went, I was turning up to uh, to meets and I wasn't rested. Um, whereas last year we'd done a lot because I wasn't focusing mainly on on Champs because mm. obviously I, I just didn't knew we weren't at that level. Um, and kind of this season we sat down and said from kind of, uh, yeah, just after the Christmas period into the new year, we'd said that I want to just keep knuckling down, have kind of a refresh, just going into the meet. Cause yeah, bucks, I had like, I think it was 11 swims in total cool. with, yeah, uh, individuals. So I did all three individuals, all three finals, uh, mixed medley relay, medley relay, free relay. And obviously their heats and finals. Mm. So I knew I had a busy program and yeah, coming away with those times at Bucks was was definitely a shock because I was quicker than what I was last year when I wasn't in that heavy block. Mm. Mm. Um so yeah, it was definitely interesting to kind of look at yeah, where we were at, but still I didn't know I had so much progression still to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It must have given you a load of confidence and belief, though, to hit those times, knowing that you had that hard training block and then going into a taper for champs. It must have given you so much confidence then give you the belief that you were going to hit those times. Did you feel that? Yeah, I think the things that we've been doing in training, um, whether it be, yeah, just threshold sets or VO2 sets and things like that, we were, I was hitting times that we've not seen before. And mm -hmm. Gary was finishing sessions and we were having kind of like, half an hour debriefs after after training late at night just you know nattering about what we'd done and what I wanted to do in the next sessions and things and yeah we would he was just like yeah some of these times are well crazy really yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary's a good talker so I bet there was longer than half an hour on some nights. yeah some some yeah. some occasions were longer but yeah no it's all good um he's always said yeah that that's something I've been good at is always feeding back and always mm. telling him yeah how I'm feeling and what I want, what I want to improve on, and he definitely agrees with that as well. It's a psychological effect then, as well as the physical side of training as well. So Gary's good at that yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, th I I definitely said in one of the interviews at um, Champs, I said that his mentoring has definitely had a huge impact. Mm. You know, mm. um, he's been really good with, uh, yeah, kind of the psychological edge and and the enjoyment in it, keeping that enjoyment mm. rather than letting the pressure build up and it was definitely something I noticed a difference in at champs this year was how I was going into the races and I was really really excited to literally just race yeah, um yeah. you know my mind was the week before I'd been at home the weekend before and I was literally sat at home literally just like twitching almost just <laughs> trying to just waiting for the races to come um yeah 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 you know. I think I, I bumped into him on I think it was day four and so it was after your 50, after your 100. And all he said was, we're just enjoying it. That's, that's literally it. He, he didn't really have any more feedback. He was just like, look, it's just enjoyment. We're, we're taking each day and just enjoying it as you come. And I mean, you can tell like the smile that was on his face, on your face, the whole team <laughs> on Paul's side. It's such a great it ethos works. to have at a meet like that as well. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, should we go through your swims at champs then? Because we're in the lovely position for my OCD that chronologically it goes 50, 100, <laughs> 200, which is brilliant. So let, let's let start with your 50 then. On paper, kind of going into the meet, there were, I think, entry times, 15 swimmers separated by less than a second. So mm. kind of, yeah, on paper, expected a fairly close race, but it wasn't anything of the sort. You went the second fastest time a Brit has ever gone, fifth fastest this year. You couldn't have asked for a better start to the meet. Yeah, definitely. I think it was the first, the, yeah, the heat swim. You know, I finished the heat and looked up at the board and I was like, yeah, I was I was in shock, to be honest. Um, I knew, yeah, we knew that I was going to be quick, but 25-0 in, in a heat in the morning was mm. quite the improvement. I mean, mm. I think... It was over half a second PB from what I'd ever done in a morning swim. Mm. Um, 
Did you have to um, kind of stop yourself tightening up in the final? Bit of pressure after that kind of heat swim straight away? Because 50s is quite hard to go faster in the final. Yeah, yeah. Um, we kind of knew I had a bit of bit of time here or there to, to take off, um, whether it be yeah, through the breakout or yeah, in the finish. Um, mm. We kind of knew that there's always time to take off. Um, and it definitely showed in the final. It was probably one of the worst uh, swims I've actually done, considering <laughs> I scraped into the lane rope and was, felt like I, I was... did a huge glide into, into the wall. I was just about um, to bring up that, that, that little collision you had with a lane rope, um, which obviously cost you, I don't know, a couple of hundreds here or there, you know. Um, we did see a few swimmers do that. We saw Abby Wood do it, I believe, in the 200 yeah. IM, I think it was. Is it quite tough to swim in a straight line in, in lane four as well? Um, Pond I think it's just how the lighting, because you have that the big lights on that one side, possibly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, added in with the splash. And yeah, it's kind of, it is challenging sometimes. Now, yeah. it, it's a little way away yet, but is Liam Tancock's British record in your sights at all? Do you look at the 50 now? Do you focus on the 100? Uh, I think that speed is, is always going to be an advantage. You know, um, we said it throughout Champs how that 50 really boosted everything up. I mm -hmm. think we knew how much speed was there. And we then used that in, yeah, that first 100 where... You know, I went out, I think, 25-8 in the heats mm. to feet. Mm. And it was that was definitely a, a kind of advantage that I had was using that easy speed. And, yeah, so I think definitely it's it's definitely a, something to chase. Um, I didn't what think is... I'd be this close to it this early, but... What is it? It's yeah. like 24 flat, isn't it? 24-0-4 or something like that. 0-4, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's fast. It's really fast. What Do you think then... Record, so? Do you think then having the 50 first set you up for what is, in my eyes, the more important of the three, the 100 back? Yeah, I think uh, I've always liked having the 50 before the 100 for definite. Um, or just, yeah, it's it's definitely a good one to kind of bed yourself in because you're not stressing about turns or mm. having that fitness there. It is just you go as quick as you can and it's definitely a good one to build yourself into and see where you're at speed wise. Mm. So going into the meet, was the hundred your main priority? Yeah, definitely. It yeah. was. Yeah. Um, it was just, we were, we were just, the plan was just to hit the 50 and see where we were at and mm. then build the hundred off of that. And it was, it was a bit of a shock to be as quick as I was in the 50. Mm. Um, but I mean, yeah, you can't complain about it. <laughs> um, and then we just knew that I had to build that hundred into it. And what was really surprising was how it was the quickest I'd ever been out, and it was the quickest I'd ever come back second fifty. Yeah. And yeah. it was, yeah, it was a good one, really. So, so that that was was that more of the shock that at the comeback speed was was more surprising than the going out speed. Yeah, I think. We've always we've always known that my kind of last twenty five of a hundred say is always strong, just mm -hmm. based off of my stroke. You know, you have a lot of these swimmers that have a much higher stroke rate. Um, they don't catch as much water, and that's something that's definitely an advantage is keeping that kind of a that slower rhythm compared to other people. Mm. And it's definitely holds the water better, and you get that kind of almost. It looks like yeah, I'm building it into that last into that wall. It's more efficient, Wait, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of bonkers to think about when you your 50 was so fast, because a 50 is usually just a high turnover, but actually you're talking about stroke efficiency is essentially how you swim. Yeah, yeah. So your 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 100 then, you, am I right in thinking, first time under 54, massive PB, yeah. um, and it is a massively important race simply because of the medley relay. Like even if you don't hit what was a ludicrous consideration mm -hmm. time and qualification time, you from that swim alone, I think at that point you know you're going to Japan. Um, I don't know. It's always a challenging one. Um, I think it was just kind of we just wanted to get through the week and see what it brought. Um, you know, I, I definitely went in wanting to be on that team. Um, but again, we, we didn't know where we were at. We didn't know where other people were at. And 
I think the times were definitely a lot quicker than what we might first have imagined. Mm. I mean, yeah, to drop a, a whole second PB in a heat swim um, was definitely a shock. And I think it has it has obviously showed how much work we've put in, um, how much I've looked after myself. Um, and it's definitely a bonus to be in and around those 53 highs. But again, it's there's still way more that we can look to take off. I mean, you had some stiff competition, especially from um, Cam Brooker, who was only two hundredths off you in, in when he came second. Are you a swimmer that thrives on a strong field to race against you to try and spur you on? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of meets, obviously, with Birmingham where we've gone to, say, regionals and things, and you don't get that competitiveness as much. So being in that field where you're racing eight top, top guys, they're all within a second, and it's... Mm. It's just a really good environment almost, you know, like in the in the call rooms and stuff, we're all talking to each other. We're all bigging each other up for the race and having a laugh, say. And and it's only when you get into the pool or into that kind of when you're behind the the kind of banners where everyone puts their proper game face on and they're ready to challenge it. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, yeah. all of like on, the the call room shots that we got from poolside and stuff like that, they they were, in my opinion, far too relaxed for kind of a meet with that sort of importance. But then you say it was when you disappeared out of view from the cameras behind the blocks where it, like the chatting stopped. But it's kind of good to see the British women's like so, there's no animosity between anyone, even though there's so much importance on the line, especially for that 100 back. Yeah, definitely. You, it's definitely, yeah. Again, it's a good environment to be in where everyone, you're all chasing the same goal you all want that selection on the team and you all want those opportunities to race. But it's definitely, um, yeah, if you look at it from the perspective where, yeah, you're all chasing that same goal, but you're all pushing each other on, you're always pushing the limit. And I think having those consideration times and qualifying times being so fast definitely pushed the limit on a lot more. You know, you could say the FINA, the FINA A time was a 54 zero. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people could have been around that, and having those really fast times is, it's yeah, it's pushing the limit and showing people that, yeah, you can make a FINA A time, but you look at the top swimmers in the world, you know, Hunter Armstrong's going 52 mid at this time of the year. There's a lot more top guys out there, and that's where they want us to be. It's interesting you say that because there's a few people that really dislike those fast consideration times. So you're someone who likes it being fast as though it's almost like a target. And was it, was that the same for all the other guys in the final as well? That they it, that that kind of drove them on to bigger, better performances. I think it's got to, yeah, really. Um, I didn't really speak to too many of the guys about the times I'm, that I can remember. Um, mm. But yeah, sitting down with Gary, we've always said like it's just an objective there, you know. You don't need to stress about it. It was probably the first time I've gone into a meet not focusing on the times I wanted to do. Mm. It was more going there, looking to enjoy it, knowing you've put in the work and just being in that mindset where you're ready to race and you're excited to race and excited to yeah push the limit. Yeah, That's you say and... Matt said that as well. Yeah, he, he said did. that about. He didn't talk about the time at all. He just wanted to do the race. And obviously, the time came with it, which is obviously what's happened with you, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You say the likes of like Hunter Armstrong, um, I think Kalashnikov has gone a ridiculous time this weekend as well, are all fifty two mids right now. How do you think you and Gary can mastermind getting down to that sort of level? I think there's so much still, yeah. As I said, is there's so much that we can still look to put into my programme and things that we can do to increase yeah, training times or the meters that I'm doing or even less meters say it just depends on where I'm at and I think one thing is I've had loads of kind of strength problems because I've not had that kind of S&C program from when I've been a youngster I've just been like last year yeah, I was stuck in the deep end where I just had, had this huge program to do and I've, well realistically I hadn't been in the gym mm. um, you know you do a bit on your own back at home just whatever whatever you think works and then now I've got my own on the scholar program I've got my own PT and Vasil he's been unbelievable you know he he didn't have a big background of swimming whatsoever and he's been working really really well with Gary 
as well with the, with the whole team. Mm. And he's seen, he's been at, he's been at races. You know, he came to I think it was counties. We we came off our training camp, and he came and watched. He came to Bucks, and he's just really really open to learn it and having that kind of close close relationship has definitely helped a lot where he's looking at everything that I can improve on mm. but there's still way more that I can kind of put in, into my program to help improve yeah strength and things yeah it's always an exciting position to be in. <coughs> definitely yeah so your final event of the week then I think we saw you poolside before it and you said essentially it's a, it's a bit of fun no pressure whatsoever 200 and yet again kind of you dropped i think it's a second and a half in your heat swim to 158 7 and then again even more in the final tour 157 1 7 um did you see that coming in the two because I'll, I'll be bluntly <laughs> honest here i don't think me and dan did no <laughs> yeah i think we knew i'd put in a good swim at bucks i mean i think i went two double oh point two and I really wanted to get the sub two out there because um, it's kind of like, yeah, that psychological barrier where, you know, you've been chasing it for so long and you're point two of a second off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the plan for the yeah, the heat was the same as how I'd swam everything else. Just go out there, challenge it and see where you end up. And I think the heat swim was definitely, I definitely still had a lot more in there. You know, I was coming down at last 50 thinking... I could, I've got more in here, but it's, again, you've got that final in your mind where mm. you don't want to bury yourself. And I think then going into the final, it was, uh, we kind of discussed the race plan and yeah, it was definitely, I was looking forward to racing. Yeah. Because I, sp I spoke to your dad and I said, when when you went at 150 and I thought, ah, oh, he's maxed out. I, I, to go from two minute flat, let's say, to lose a second and a half roughly, I thought, oh, you, you've maxed out. And then to lose a second and a half, Again. literally <laughs> we were we were blown away by that <laughs> we we said in our review that you turned a full second just over a second behind Brody, and then you i don't know what happened you just clawed it back and i i think you split a 29 6 on that final 50 which is yeah. completely insane but maybe that's due to your efficiency and your your hold and catching the water mm. maybe it's down to that yeah um we've definitely done a lot of work and training on holding those sorts of times and always just trying to be around those 29s kind of um mm. so it's definitely just keeping the rhythm almost mm. and building it in almost mm. yeah i think i i've watched the finish like four or five times now and i i, I still watch it back and i'm <laughs> still just like how has he won this how was he like and it's literally <laughs> it's the fly kick and the dive and the finish and it's like a perfect spotted finish whereas i think Brody glides like the slightest amount so it's kind of a testament to the yeah. work that goes on in the 50 the 100 and it's just been translated straight to the two that even in a lot well, two back is a long race even in a long race like that yeah. the finish is as important yeah i mean gary's always on about it in training you know even when we're doing just easy sessions or an easy part of a session, he's always constantly on us about finishes and he's always saying, yeah, it's those little 0.1s here or there. And mm. it's obviously shown. I mean, that field contained Olympians. You both had like Brody that I just spoke about. You had Luke Greenbank as well, both of which are international medalists. I mean, was that your biggest win of the week? Was that the one you were most happy with out of the three? Um... Yeah, I think it was. It was definitely the icing on the cake, you know. Mm. Um, going, winning the 50 and the 100 was, well, it was really, really good, realistically. Um, it was definitely a shock. And then going into the 200s, we just knew I needed to challenge it. We knew there might have been a good swim in there, but, I mean, a 157 low is it's getting on, yeah, it's getting on top level, really. Yeah, no, yeah definitely. It's definitely a good thing, good place to be building off of now. Mm. Um you know, moving into the summer, there's still a lot more that we can improve on. Mm. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's looking good. So you've got your selection now for Worlds. Out, out of interest, as a swimmer, we, we all find out, I think we found out on the Wednesday. When did you find out that you made the team? Uh, yeah, it was the Wednesday as well, yeah. Oh, so you literally find out in the morning or as the announcement yeah, goes live? Yeah. yeah, it was in the morning, yeah. So you get an email. Just from... an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so worlds this summer in Japan, 
what's the aim for you? What would you like to achieve? Have you thought that far ahead yet? Yeah, I think me and Gary have spoken about it. Um, it's just about kind of swimming your own race, uh, let, not letting the occasion get to you and going out there and again, just enjoying it. Um, mm. You know, I'm definitely going to be in a good place by the time the summer comes. Um, we've got a good block of training incoming and I think it's going to, it's going to bode well for the summer. Um, again, it's the same mindset as what we had at champs. Um, mm. you know what you've prepared, you know, how you're going to enjoy the racing. You know, it's a new, it's a whole new place to be racing, you know? And mm. I think as well with the competition that you're against, you've got those top Americans, the Italians, it's. It's definitely a good place to be at and again it's about just pushing that limit 100%. have british swimming told you anything about the relays because of course there's a there's a number of backstrokers on the team you've got Brody, yourself and cam have they talked to you about how relays are happening in terms of who's swimming the heats or has that not been decided yet no nothing's been discussed so far okay good try done oh well Ollie, it's been so great speaking to you on this week's podcast, kind of reviewing what was an amazing week's at Champs. Now, we do usually finish with our elite guests with some quick fire questions. So we'll yep. jump straight into them. So what is your favourite event? I think it's got to be the 100. You know, it's you can use that proper good speed down at first 50 and then it's just about holding on. And <laughs> I think, yeah, you love being able to challenge it and then bringing it back as hard as you can realistically it's yeah it's just a fun event nice uh who is your swimming idol my swimming idol oh um i think yeah from a young age you obviously watch michael phelps mm. and again you show he's literally pushed the limit of swimming to a whole nother level um you know was it was it four olympics he was at five olympics five yeah five yeah and mm. It just shows, yeah, he's obviously had that mindset of always pushing the limit and folks not focusing on the results as such, but focusing mm. on where he is and what he needs to do. Because, um, mm. like, yeah, you can't imagine the limelight that he's in and, you it's know, true. the stresses that he has on himself to perform constantly. Mm. And I think, yeah, he's definitely had that mindset of not letting the, the occasion get to him. And, yeah, so I'd say... It's kind of the same mindset that we've had is, yeah, just focusing on where you're at and what you need One to do. Time. And then, yeah, seeing seeing what comes with it. Nice. Um, what's your proudest moment in swimming so far? Uh, hmm. I think, yeah, champs probably is definitely the best. Just the um, whole thing. No, I've had a lot of, yeah, realistically. Um <laughs> Coming off of other meets, it's been really good. But to have a meet then moving into an international meet it's mm. and getting that mm. first selection, I think that's definitely the, the top moment, you know. Um, yeah. We obviously had Indianapolis at the World Cup, but it's not the same as, yeah, being actually selected and being on that programme to get you there, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, what's the hardest set Gary's ever handed out? to you in training oh the hardest set oh we do have some we have some lactate sessions that are pretty 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 rough um i think one was we had six 100s max uh off like seven minutes say so you oh, I hate it. You, you get in and you bang one out and then you have to just stand around and let yourself marinate almost yeah. um but again we do that and then there's, there's an, another couple of lads that we always try and challenge each other and we might go for some 50s afterwards and just, oh. yeah, proper bury yourself. It's <laughs> yeah, all good fun. <laughs> Do you know what? We've had we've had Gary on this podcast and asked him what the hardest set he ever handed out was, so it'd be interesting to see if they line up. Um, yeah. And final yeah, question then. Yeah. It's... I think it was I think it was a distance set that he'd, he'd, yeah, he'd maybe. said about. I think he literally yeah. handed it out that morning that we had spoken to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. final question is a little bit away from swimming. It helps everyone get to know you that little bit better away from the pool. If you used to go on a road trip, there's three spaces in the car. You can take friends, family, celebrities, anyone you want. Who would you take with you? Um, 
I think, can my first one be a group of people? <laughs> yeah, go for it. We'll have a big um, car. <laughs> so, so we have a, we have a, a WhatsApp chat for my swimming, basically, you know, live links get put on their results. Right. And okay. I think that's been definitely something that's helped me through meets and stuff where you've got this huge amount of people supporting you, family, friends, um, and yeah, it's really nice to see you've got all those people supporting you. No. Um, I think next, I think it's got to be, I'd probably go for Lewis Hamilton, to be fair. Is he um, driving? That'd be yeah, I'd driving, probably yeah. let him drive. If not, I'd drive, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, again, another one that's, yeah, pushed the limit in the sport. Um, mm -hmm. And finally, um Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it it might have to be Michael Phelps. Yeah. Nice. nice. Again, you learn off them. Invite, surround yourself with those people that you can learn off them. Yeah. Sounds good. It's well, Ollie. More of a mini bus. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all that matters. Ollie, thank yeah. you so much for coming on to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. Best of luck with your next training block heading into Japan and a massive congratulations on your performances at Champs. Thoroughly deserved. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Hopefully Gary doesn't put too many more of those 6 100s up because it, it sounds like I, I get these little flashbacks of, oh, how, how I used to hate them. I was always sick. But yeah, congratulations <laughs> on the, on amazing champs. And yeah, good luck for, for the summer. I think we're, go, we're going yeah, to do quite you. well. Yeah, Yeah, hopefully. Dan, great to have on one of the swimmers of champs, no doubt about that. And to hear the fantastic work that's going on behind the scenes and the fact that he's only been properly swimming now for 18 months. I know it, it sounds like a surprise, but actually it's a little bit of a theme coming through from a few of the swimmers we spoke to. Like you said in the podcast, Alex Cahoon is now yeah. well, 18 months into his life at Loughborough and he banged out a 22-1 in the 53. You've got Cara Hanlon who's hitting records. Like Swimming doesn't have to be hours and hours and hours as a junior. And these swimmers, Ollie especially, are proving that. I wonder if these younger swimmers, if they're doing these laps upon laps upon laps, are over-exhausting themselves. It's almost like they're well, pushing themselves too they early. Um, not to the point of burnout, because some of these the swimmers are still going. But, you know, they, they're, they're, the, the potential of not pushing themselves further, uh, they, they, they kind of get rid of that a little bit, if that makes sense. Because well, you... there's no... There's no progression. That's what I'm looking for. There's no yeah. progression in their training, you know? <laughs> Got there eventually. <laughs> well, you don't win a very unlikely that you win Olympic gold at like 14, 15, 16. Mm. But if you're Summer Macintosh, you probably do. But the whole point is to keep swimmers in the sport. And by the time then you're, you're a grown man like Ollie is now, there's still so much more to add on top. And I I really do like that like i said it's a theme we're seeing on these elite swimmers it it's kind of a good model that i think more people should maybe be looking at but he's done the triple at british champs he's the first man to do it since 2007 marco lochran and it seems like there's still a lot or a long way to go like there's a there's a lot to be added on he can get a lot quicker when you hear him speak well, he said it himself, and so did through Gary, that enjoyment is still the number one thing. Oh, yeah. Even though he's on the world's team, he's going to Japan this summer, he's not really too fussed about uh, his times or really how he swims. I'm sure there is a little bit how, of how he swims, but he just wants to enjoy it. He just wants to race these guys. Hmm. And I said it in the, in the podcast that Matt Richards had that same mentality yeah. as well, and it's brought out the best performances uh, out of him. I d yeah, I wonder if that's the way to do it because he's not putting so much pressure on him. He talks about Phelps being his role model at the end and actually we kind of forget how much pressure must have been on his shoulders in Beijing mm. and the fact that he dealt with it. And maybe that's what the, the mentality is at the moment with the, the psychologists that these guys have to try and not overthink about it and just just do it. Just Just do what your body's been trained to do. I wonder how much those fast qualification and consideration times help with that like we say it's absolutely ridiculous for a swimmer to break a, break a british record in april to make the team which it is it is mm. but when you're going into the 100 back you know that time so fast that you're just not bothered by it so you are mm. just enjoying the race and what happens happens like i everyone says it's such a bad thing and all the swim swim comments are they don't quite get it but yeah I kind of understand it like and like 
it just takes so much pressure out for the swimmers, essentially, even though the times add so much pressure. Yeah, well, we were discussing it a little bit, and I was, again, going for the athlete's mindset, kind of like what you're saying. You just ignore the times, yeah. and you just do whatever you can do and race the person next to you. And you take Keanu McInnes, for example, that, that 100 fly qualification time on consideration time was way, way out there, 56 low, whatever it was. Mm. Um, and she hit a point four i think 0.5 second pb to go 58 yep. uh, sub 58 for the first time so it's worked for her off. it's works for ollie and i have no doubt it's going to be or it works for a few others as well mm. so i actually again it worked for tokyo it brought our best medal haul in and i do wonder if we carry on doing it because our swimmers are they're not hitting these times but he hits a that doesn't matter time. at this point it does doesn't it? matter <laughs> yeah so he's he's up there you know even though he didn't hit the consideration time so i just and i he, wonder he... if we just carry on doing it he also does get the logic of the fast time because mm. you want, like, if someone's got into the standard of Hunter Armstrong, they're rewarded with a straight yeah, away. But exactly. that, that's the point the times are at. They're, they're at, what, at world finals. That's the mark yeah. that British women want people to be at. But then if you're not at that mark, you can still make the team. Like, he was a triple British champion. They weren't going to not pick him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, in the end, we picked 14 summers, didn't we, on uh, yeah. coach's discretion. It was interesting that is the 200 bachelor quiz's best swim, which I think a lot of people would agree with, mainly yeah. because I, I thought he was a sprinter. I thought going in, he was a 50 slash 100 meter backstroker, not a 200 meter backstroker. And the fact that he came back so well, interesting that efficiency is mm. his biggest thing. Um, I think that's a, a big takeaway for those youngsters listening in. Well, my takeaway from his 200 back being so good and him saying like he had so much left in the heats, I wonder if he mm. pushes that. Like he went out hard in the 100. Don't get me wrong. I wonder if he pushes that even more now. And he's just like, well, I've got back end in me. Like, I can swim a good two back and come back in a 29.6. Like, oh, it's encouraging. Maybe that's the progression. Maybe that's what Gary's got in his master grand scheme, you know, in the, in the background. So who knows what he's going to do in the summer. But it looks good right now. now we, it all we, looks good. We've talked a lot about Gary Humpage in this podcast. If you haven't. If you're not aware of the work that he's doing up at University of Birmingham, go back. We spoke to him in February. We kind of had a little inkling that something was going on, something was special there. We've had, I think he was recommended to us by a few coaches on Paul's side that he's one of the nicest guys. He's doing something special. Go have a listen. We'll link it in the show notes. If you can't find it, it should be easy enough to find. Um, but yes, first guest, post champs, selected one to the team. There are two more hopefully on the way very soon. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And me and Dan will be back in seven days' time. Yeah, thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.